our next session, we are going to have our guests from Trubeck. We're going to have Jim Murphy, uh, Kaylee Ward, and Jared Hall. My first time meeting them today. So uh, they're from Trubeck, and they're going to be talking about the power of dashboards. So come on out, guys. All right. Thank you. We were supposed to have Metallica as walk up music, but that didn't quite happen. So, but <laughs> good morning, everybody. So, we're Trubeck. Today, we're going to talk to you about the power of dashboards and a little bit about us. Uh, next slide, please. So, just to introduce myself, I'm Jim Murphy. I'm a pre construction executive at Trubeck and on stage with my colleagues. I'm Kaylee Ward. I'm also a pre construction executive. And I'm Jared Hall, senior data engineer. So um, one of the things I wanted everyone to do is uh, during our presentation, we're going to have a little interaction with everybody. So there's a, uh, an app called Mentimeter. We used it last year. You have an opportunity to take out your phone and be able to scan a QR code and interact with us. A little bit about Trubeck Construction. So like many of the firms that are here on the stage or in the audience today, uh, representing no, national yeah, firms and local no, firms. Uh, we have four offices. We are uh, founded in the San Francisco Bay Area in 2007 and expanded to the Pacific Northwest in Portland in 2019. Uh, we're a billion dollar a year company. We employ over 600 people and we're builders. We specialize in ground up construction, tenant improvements, a lot of which we self perform. We represent a wide variety of market types and specialize our core markets, our life science, healthcare, higher education, commercial office, uh, advanced technology, and multifamily. Um, our collaborative culture at Trubeck has six values. Today, I really wanted to represent one, and that is courageously making ideas reality. From the beginning of Trubeck, we've been focused on pre-construction services and high client service, especially because we are headquartered in the Bay Area. We are focused uh, as an industry leader in innovation, cost predictability, and consistent problem solving. We are all pre-construction professionals here and industry leaders, some of which have uh, different sized departments. Pre, uh, Trubeck has 30 people in our pre-construction group, some of which are specializing in self-perform work, and some are MEPF specialty estimators. Uh, unique to Trubeck, we like to leverage data, and today we really want to uh, introduce how data can help uh, leverage our industry. Yeah, so um, as Jim mentioned, we're focusing a little bit on innovation today, um, speaking specifically on data. Uh, for the last uh, few years with Trubeck, we've had the opportunity to kind of start working with a lot of different systems. Um, you can kind of see a few uh, listed below. But really just kind of understanding like what we do with Trubeck and how we can integrate different systems and information, um, building reports, tools, dashboards for um, a lot of different departments at Trubeck. Um, from that, we actually were fortunate enough to win Pro, uh, Procore Innovator of the Year last year at Groundbreak. And um, uh, since we've already kind of been able to help other departments, we want to start focusing more on how we can elevate pre-con. I'm sure as many of you can relate to, um, we often think of great ideas when looking at new technology, but have no idea how to actually put our ideas into place and make it part of, make it go to fruition. Um, in my case, uh, I had already implemented a Destiny Estimator. I saw the power of all the data that came out of the program, but had no idea and lacked the knowledge of how to actually take that data and implement it into something that was more palatable. Uh, but luckily, I have the data team with Jared here, um, and they really have the technical expertise um, and the ability and knowledge to uh, pioneer these ideas uh, and make them a reality, which is fantastic. I didn't have to learn how to code. You know, I have this data team that helps me out. So let's back up and talk about why Trubeck picked Destiny. So we sought out, I'm sure as most of you guys did, we wanted, we were using Sage Timberline, and we wanted to find a new platform uh, for our estimating software solution. And our goals were software that is constantly improving and has great customer service, um, standardizing all of our reports across all of our offices, integrated software for takeoff, estimating reports and historical costs, as well as the streamlined workflow. And Destiny was literally the only one that checked all of the boxes. Um, when we started using Estimator, we found a few bonus features that we all absolutely love. Uh, Jim's favorite is filtering. 
Um, mine is team estimating. I mean, how many people in here have saved so many hours having the ability to have multiple estimators in the estimate at the same time? A lot, right? So great, save me from so many late nights before the estimates turned in after reviewing everyone else's estimate input. Um, the WBSs, alternate tracking, the built-in Excel dashboards are great, but of course, the focus of what we're here talking about today is access to all of our data. I mean, this is huge. It's, we now have the ability to look into all of our past and our current projects um, and, and have everything there at the touch of our hands. So let's move on. Um, and see how everyone else is using this data. Um, would you guys mind going to the QR code on the screen? And the first question we're gonna ask is how you guys are currently tracking your historical costs. So I'll give you guys a minute to log in, start looking at that. So at Trubeck, we were previously using Cortex or EOS, um, as well as Excel um, for the simple cost comparisons. But both of those required somebody to go back in after the estimate or the GMP was completed and double enter the data. Um, with Destiny now, we don't need to have that double entering data. We're able to capture all of that data. Well, we were hoping okay. that the uh, poll results would show a lot of the software that everyone in the room is using. Um, so while um, the team gets the presentation back up, um, maybe we can just get some shout outs from the yeah, audience what you're using. Smart sheets. Power BI, great. What was that? Domo. Domo. I don't think I know that one. So we had another question that was, um, how, who uses data reporting tools to visualizing information? And since we don't have that slide up, maybe we can just do a show of hands. Does anybody in here use data reporting tools to visualize the information? There we go. I know I personally, I started with like Excel. Um, I thought like charts and pivot tables was pretty cool. I'm the, started developing a little bit more and Power BI is kind of what I focused on. I know other tools are like Tableau, there's Google, uh, Google has some products, Data Studio, I believe, yeah. Okay, so now we have all this data, what do we do with it, right? That's the big question. Um, so just to start pointing this out, that when we say dashboard from now on, we're talking Power BI dashboards, not Excel dashboards integrated into Destiny. And this was a huge, um, Moment of confusion for a lot of people at Trubeck because we have a lot of Power BI dashboards and everybody just calls them dashboards. So our data team kind of had to change their mindset a little bit on what we were talking about when we said dashboards and we'd have to always add Power BI uh, since we're all Destiny users and prefer to call dashboards within Destiny dashboards. So like our data team having to change their mindset on dashboards, we kind of changed our mindset on how we wanted to plan these dashboards going forward. So we did a roadmap just like a normal software company or like Vectech does. Uh, so the first one that we targeted was historical cost. Um, and really that's because we stopped using Cortex and we saw the immediate need that we needed to have a dashboard. So we had that data and able to capture it. Um, the second one that we're gonna be targeting is the pre-construction health dashboard. And this is inspired by something our operations department currently uses, which is called a project health dashboard. And we don't wanna have operations having all the fun. Precon needs some love too. Um, and last but not least, the next one that we're gonna be targeting um, as the first two are already in implementation or already in, um, we're working on them now, is gonna be the client estimate review dashboard. Um, we'll continually improve upon this roadmap um, and Jared's team will continuously work with us to come up with new dashboards. So um, historical cost dashboard. This Excel spreadsheet, everyone in here probably has one of these at their company, right? It's side by side of similar projects escalated to today's dollars, sorted by system with our fees. This is what we all have, it's great. It's invaluable data for both pre-construction professionals and owners, but we need something more than that. We need to know, um, you know, there's other cost drivers and that data on that spreadsheet just doesn't show everything that is telling the story of why one project is more expensive than the other or why one project is more cost effective than the other. So if we go to the next slide, we went back and we looked at our template projects that we had set up as part of our implementation. The project tab is the key. It has all of our key performance indicators listed there. We did a pretty good job during implementation. We, we thought of most of them, but not all of them. Um, the obvious ones are you know, part of the the original uh, template project setup, which is region, market sector, structure type, right? 
but what else is a really big cost driver? So if you're looking at site selection, for instance, we are located in the Bay Area of California. There's not a lot of land, nothing's left. So everything that we're building on is going to be a reclaimed site. We're gonna have demo, there might be uh, contaminated soils there. Uh, we also are starting to build more in the landfill area or the bayfill area of our region, which has really poor soil qualities. So we're gonna have really deep foundations or ground improvements. Those are gonna be huge cost drivers depending on where the owner selects to bid, build the job. Um, also is going to be what city are they building in? We have a lot of cities that are requiring all electric buildings now, PV panels, et cetera. Those are gonna be big cost drivers. Um, what is the owner going to wanna to put in the building? Does this warm shell have a conference center? Does it have amenities or is it just a blank warm shell? Also, how do we want to present the data? If it's a developer, they may wanna see it as cost per rentable square foot versus cost per gross square foot. If it's a hotel or hospitality, they wanna see it as cost per key. So putting all of that data in our project tab was really important before we started to capture the data and make these dashboards. So now we did all those edits and we were able to turn it over to Jared's team to make the magic happen. Yeah, so um, once Kaylee kind of handed off the initial, initial vision, uh, first thing we actually did was just reach out to Back Tech and like, hey, can we get access to our data and start poking around? Um, that sometimes can be a little bit trickier than you might think, um, depending on how you're kind of hosting your environment. If you're hosting on-prem, it's most likely pretty straightforward for you to get access, but um, we're actually using Bechtex as a cloud-hosted environment, so um, they were able to share us just access to the database, um, and there is some networking uh, difficulty with making sure IP addresses are cleared to actually access. Um, that being said, shout out to Mo. I think I sent him like 10 different IP addresses when I was working remote uh, um, to be able to poke around. But once we were actually able to kind of get into the database and start bringing things into Power BI, um, first thing we noticed is there's a lot of information behind estimates. Um, and it was kind of mind boggling at first. So being able to kind of just narrow down on specific estimates and like what are we looking at and kind of how do things link together and rebuild you know, to see an estimate was a little tricky at first. Um, once we did a lot of that legwork though, we realized you know, where things exist. Some things might need to be cleaned up. Some things might need to be aggregated or kind of moved around to help you know, present what we want to build in the dashboard. Um, that being said, next slide. So we were able to kind of go back with our pre-con team and just explain like, okay, we know kind of what you want to do. We understand the vision. Let's make it a reality. Um, one of the first steps is actually just kind of going through prototyping and just, you know, here's a great idea. What is it going to look like? When I click here, what do I want to see here? You know, this is actually an um, example of a Bluebeam mock-up we actually put together. Um, and from that, we actually kind of learned some takeaways that were kind of helpful and continuous improvement of, okay, there's a lot of different estimate versions, right? So how do I know which version to display in a historical cost dashboard? So we actually just came up with an idea, let's just make a checkbox in uh, Destiny itself and just say approve for Power BI. And so all we had to do was just filter that and we could see specifically which ones are ready to be displayed for historical cost purposes. Um, once we kind of went through that, it was kind of just development, uh, building an actual product, and just back and forth with the pre-con team. Um, once we got through product release, then it's just data validation. Uh, this one <laughs> was a little bit fun. There's a lot of uh, just guessing and checking and making sure things match between the two systems. I think I called Jim and Kaylee randomly out of the day, like random days, just, hey, what is this number? Why does it not match here? And um, just going back and forth and understanding, am I doing things wrong, right? Am I seeing things correctly? But um, yeah, we were able to kind of get that taken care of. And um, I think next slide, we can kind of walk through a little bit of the dashboard. So this is what you see when you log into Power BI. As you can see, it's super clean, it's really simple, and it's user friendly. We want to make it so that there's not too much thought behind it. So on the left-hand side, these are all of our filter properties. Um, so this is a lot of the items that are coming from the project tab of Destiny Estimator. Switch the toggle to approve for Power BI, you're going to get all of the last estimates of a project, so the GMPs, that's the final cost of the project. Um, if you want to look at something that's a, you know, DD estimate or something like that, you would have, wouldn't have that toggle on. Up here in the estimate properties, we can search by market sector, by city, architect, so this is a great tool for marketing if they want to see which projects we've built with certain architect. 
The next section is the building features. So this is where we get the foundation type, roof type, et cetera. Up here, we have some contract information. So what if we're looking for projects that are lead platinum that we've built, projects that might have diversity goals? Those are gonna be in this section. And then the internal team, so if you wanted to focus in on a certain estimator to see their projects. Um, once you filter these and as you add additional filters, this list populates and it, it'll go down, you know, as the more filters that you have. So you'll have a list of, let's say, 20 projects, but you really only want to do a comparison of five projects. So you just go in and you click on which projects you want to go ahead and look at, and then you click on View Estimate Comparison. So go ahead and go to the next slide. So this is what you get, and it'll pop it out no time whatsoever because this is all data that's just in Destiny. So now we're not having to double enter everything. Looks very similar to the old Excel file that we've all done, right? It's got our system summary, our fees, um, and it's comparing them um, on a cost per square foot. But like I said, we can change that to RSF or gross square foot. At the top, we can also go ahead and filter by, we use it with group phase. We have our own system that we sort things in. I'm sure a lot of other companies have that too. But if no one wants to see it in uniform format or master format, we can toggle it to that. Um, and then on the next slide, we also have a view where we can compare the projects by their That's KPIs, right. so we can look and see why is this one more expensive than the other. Um, their deep foundations are, are, you know, more robust, or the skin system is a higher dollar per VSF, and that's why the exterior skin is higher. Um, so this is all super invaluable, um, and at the end, we can actually export all of this to Excel to be able to present it to an owner, or we can give them this screenshot in a PDF format. So next slide, looking forward, um, I hope we've been able to uh, meet our goal of sharing how the data that we're collecting can help lift our industry. And I'm gonna leave the room with one question. So my question is, you know, what is the next challenge and how as a team can we leverage the data in Destiny Estimator to uh, better address that challenge? And so the three of us will be available all day to um, sit down and talk with anyone that's interested, and otherwise we'll open the floor up for any questions. Um, the question was how many full-time employees working on data? Uh, there are three of us currently. Yes, yeah, so that was actually something that I was gonna mention on the KPI page. Um, when we went back to our project tab, we had to add in construction start and estimate date, um, and then it's just the Power BI you can read the date and that's close to the today's dollars. Yeah, so we have our own in-house uh, TrueBet cost index that we track and we update every six months. So that's an, a, another source of data that we have that lives you know, on our servers that uh, can easily be referenced in this Power BI dashboard. Yeah, um, the question was, did we build that from scratch or did we start with the template that Destiny provides? Um, we actually did kind of reference the template at first just to get an idea of you know, what was actually in it, but this we built from scratch. Um, and a lot of it was, you know, the help with the pre-con team. They know exactly what they want to track. We've been doing historical cost tracking for a while, so they're very helpful with kind of giving us a roadmap and then just kind of going from there. Silly question, but what's KPI? I don't know what that is. Key but... performance indicator. Okay. Sorry. I, I said it really quickly in the, in the presentation, and I meant to say it a couple times because I know when I first started working with Jared, I had no idea what a KPI was. It was like a foreign language, but now it's a common, common acronym in my brain. So the question, the question was if anybody didn't hear um, that data, when you're looking through data, you inherently discover new items that you want to research more. Um, and yeah, I think the, the biggest one was the escalation piece because we thought our project tab was already built out perfectly until we went to escalate everything. Um, so having to go back and figure out how to, how to code that in to Destiny and make it read as a date versus text versus numbers, um, that took a little bit of back and forth to get that uh, figured out. Um, and then just when we started to produce the dashboards, we realized that there was different KPIs that we wanted to include. Um, we do a lot of life science work. Um, we're in the Bay Area, that's a life science hub. So um, specifically on that project type, we were started to think about, oh, we want to put some you know, vibration criteria and some of the other cost drivers in there. So definitely, I, I feel like this is going to be an ever-evolving dashboard with more and more um, KPIs that we're going to have to add to our project tab. How, how granular do you guys get into the data? Is it unit cost or is it mainly big picture? We are going at a, um, so we have systems and subsystems or group and phase. Uh, we're taking it at that, so like uniform at one and two. 
that's what we're pulling into this dashboard. We're not going into the actual line items. Well, great. The three of us will be available all day if anyone wants to come up and uh, discuss the power of dashboards with us. But thank you for allowing us to present.